What's cracking, guys? This is going to be our last uh, introductory course for the HTML and CSS. Uh, we've learned pretty much the, most of the fundamentals. Uh, we're going to learn about combinators and how to stylize things based off their parent element or whether it's adjacent to something else. What's going on guys? In this tutorial we're going to learn about something called combinators and we've actually learned about combinators previously. I didn't really mention it uh, that it was a combinator. For example when we did these spaces here we were actually doing a combination of a specific element um, within uh, another element. Actually within another element. So that's a combination to stylize a certain element that we're looking for. But there's various ways of doing that besides just the space and besides just adding a class to everything or, or a ID to everything, we can actually grab certain elements that we want that are kind of our default standard again once we come up with a design for a website that we want to apply to all properties. So for example, if we want to stylize this paragraph to have a background, what we can do is we can say, hey, I want to grab an adjacent element that's a paragraph of the H2 tag. And that's going to look for anything that's right next to it. And if it is a paragraph to the H2 tag, we're going to give that a background. And it's only going to stylize this first background. And how we're going to do that is go into our CSS file and we're just going to again say H2. We're going to give this a plus and it's going to be a paragraph what we're looking for. So the plus symbol meaning that it's adjacent to and we're just going to give this a background color of light steel blue maybe or light blue and let's save this see if it works. So let's go into our um, page here and as you can see we do have a paragraph it looks nice it has that style that we're looking for but let's say we will go into our HTML here and we're actually going to change a few things around. Let's say we have it a link and we're just going to give this an href of a pound sign and that's going to go nowhere that's going to go back to the same page that we're on and we're just going to say uh, this is a link something simple and close out our link so we can save this and go back to our page reload it and it won't have an adjacent paragraph next to this h2 tag so it's not actually going to stylize this paragraph but let's say we want to stylize all paragraphs that are on the same level as this h2 tag so if we go back into our HTML here. Um, this is another reason why what we want to keep things organized so we can see that all these paragraphs are adjacent to this H2 tag if we go fur further along uh, down the line. It's not directly adjacent to but it is on the same playing field here. For example within our caption we could have a paragraph tag and this would not be adjacent to this would not be adjacent to that uh, H2 tag because it's within something else. It's within a table. So the table is adjacent to the H2 tag, but this paragraph is not directly next to that H2 tag or it's not on the same um, level here. So let's go into our CSS and how we define all adjacent elements to our H2 tag. If we give this the tilde sign, and that's the symbol that's right next to your one on your keyboard. Um, right to the left of the one if you hit shift and then that button that's a tilde that's going to say all adjacent paragraphs to an h2 tag give it this style so if we save this go back to our page you can see we have our style on our adjacent paragraphs um, and our title didn't actually show up that was probably a terrible example for a caption but if we had it in another paragraph somewhere that wasn't adjacent it would not show up or it would not have this style. So that's another combination that you can use. There's one other one that's generally used uh, quite a bit and that is if it's a child of something. So for example, all of these headers, table headers, are a child of a table row. And this table row is a child of the table. The table is a child of the body. So we can define our styles based off uh, that kind of parent child relationship. So we're going to say anytime we have a, a table row, if there's a table header as a child, we want to give it a style. And how you do that, and how you do that within CSS is with the greater than sign. So we're just going to say table rows that have a table header element, we're going to give this a background of green. And we can also do something like a table row that has table data we're going to give this a background um, color
color of red. And this should be color as well. So now let's save this and it should work for all of uh, those styles as well. And it looks like it didn't show up for our table headers um, because I did a horizontal row or horizontal line instead of a table header. So we're going to say table, uh, table row that has table header information. Um, we're going to give it the style of green. And as you can see there, now anytime we create a table row with table header data, it's always going to have this green property. And anytime we create a row, it's going to have this red property within a table data. Um, so that's another combination that we can use. Uh, and this pretty much wraps up our C basic CSS course. We're probably going to move into PHP and learn how to start using the HTML with our PHP to make things a lot nicer, uh, to generate tables dynamically, and load up a bunch of data so it saves us time typing out all this HTML. So guys, uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the introductory course. And now we're going to jump into the PHP and we'll learn some more HTML and CSS throughout that course as well. So thanks guys and I hope you have a great rest of your day and congratulations again for making this far. See you later.